Good morning, class, and welcome. Today is Tuesday, April 28th, and we are getting started with science. So let's begin. Yesterday, we took notes on the lookout below. Very important stuff. Make sure you go back and check that out if you did not do so already. Make sure you've done that interactive notebook. Um, and today we're going to be talking, like I said in our morning meeting video, I kind of want to just emphasize this again. So yesterday we talked about basically the land part of the ocean. And so we have here, we have, this is like the sandy part, right? That you would, somebody's making noise behind me. Um, this is like the sandy part, right? This is where the waves hit that shore. Now this is totally not going to be to scale, so I have to erase it and start over. This is the sandy part. This is the waves, okay? So after that sandy part, there's like a shallower area that slowly gets a little bit deeper. Now you might not be able to touch here. You're, you know, you might be able to even stick a pole way down deep into the water, but this is still the continental shelf. In Finding Nemo, you see that part where the ocean drops off steadily. And Marlin and Dory, even though it's not scientifically possible for their lungs, they go deep into the twilight zone, okay? And so that part is the slope, and it goes way down deep. At the very bottom of the slope, remember sediment keeps hitting the slope, so there's a little clump of sediment that rests at the bottom, and then there's a flat ocean floor, which is the abyssal plain. Any cuts that go any deeper into the abyssal plain are known as trenches. So this is kind of the land part. We have the shelf, the slope, the rise, the plain, and the trench. Now we're gonna talk about the water part. So this part over here, because there are different properties to these different zones or different layers that we have in our ocean. Let's review first though, um, I want us to talk about the song that goes with this. So this is the Baby Bumblebee song. Um, and so if you don't know the song, open up your Ultimate Science Notebook to the Ocean Land Forms song that should be right where we are in our Ultimate Science Notebook. And this is how it goes. So we start off because we're walking out to the beach basically and we go like this. I'm heading out to the ocean sea, 70% with high salinity. I'm heading out to the ocean sea. Stop the shelf, okay? And so we do this like swimming motion because the shelf is where you and I would be swimming, right? The continental shelf of the ocean sea, water, um, not so deep, just perfect for me. The continental shelf of the ocean sea, stop. Now we think to ourselves, what comes next? The slope. And we show a slope or a deep decline with our arms. And then we do this crazy motion because it just shows it getting deeper. The continental slope of the ocean sea. Water gets deep oh so quickly. The continental slope of the ocean sea. Stop the rise. So we do this because this is like our collection of sediment. The continental rise of the ocean sea, bump at the bottom from depositing the continental rise of the ocean sea, stop the abyss. And so we do this to show the flat ocean floor. Awesome. Let's get started so we don't have to listen to any more Mrs. Benavides is singing. So we're starting with our triple jump. We just went through this with a song. We just went through this yesterday with the notes. Label the diagram of the ocean landforms using the following terms. Continent, continental rise, continental margin, continental shelf, abyssal plain, and continental slope. Um, so do that really quickly. I'm going to go through the answers with you right now. So I'm assuming you've already filled that in. The arrow furthest to the right, notice how that's that flat floor. That's our abyssal plain, okay? Um, the one next to it right here, that's the bump on the bottom. That's the continental rise. The one next to it um, that's pointing to that steep, steep decline, that's the continental slope. Um, that area that's that flat, it kind of looks like a shelf. That's the easiest way to remember it. This is the continental shelf. The arrow furthest to the left over here, this is the continent or just basically a fancy name for land. And the one that shows the bracket pointing to all three, the part that includes the continental slope, the continent, I mean the continental shelf, the slope, and the rise is the continental margin. So then for our skip, it says label the following pictures with the terms mid-ocean ridge, seamount, guyot, and volcanic island. 
So I think it's pretty easy to determine which one of these is the volcanic island. Basically what happens with a volcanic island, this is happening all the time in Hawaii, by the way, um, that's the one of the 50 U.S. states that's still growing in size each year. Um, that's the one on the bottom right. Um, you can see that that lava and is exploding out the top of the volcano, and as it hits the water, it's cooling, and it's just building up over time to form an island. So the one on the bottom right is a volcanic island. We talked about this one yesterday, too. This is a mid-ocean ridge. This is basically just a mountain range that's found underwater. We talked yesterday about how the mid-Atlantic ridge is the biggest ocean range, um, ocean mountain range in the world. And it extends from the North Pole to the South Pole in the Atlantic Ocean, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, which is in between Europe and North America and South America and Africa. Um, this one on the top right is a Guyot. Now, we see something that looks like this all the time in Colorado. We have a piece of land, right, that from weathering and erosion, whatever, has been flattened, right? It's a plateau. You've probably heard this word before. I'm sure a lot of you can even look out your windows and see a plateau, plateau from where you live. An underwater plateau, so all we're doing is we're taking this plateau, we're putting it underwater. Now it is something fancy called a guillot. So fun things you learned today in school. This is a guillot. This is basically just an underwater plateau. And then the last one is showing basically like an island collecting. Uh, this is a fancy way of saying basically a collection of sediment, a bump in the abyssal plain floor um, can reach up above the water. This is a seamount. Okay, then for fun, we have a coloring page. And so this is just a kind of um, review everything. Color in the abyssal plane, color in the rise, color in the slope, color in the shelf. I recommend coloring all three of those in different colors. Um, color the ocean, color the continent. This is, again, just a good practice. And if you're bored in front of the TV, you have my permission to watch TV and do this one piece of homework at the same time. Um, okay, so today we're taking notes on Into the Deep. And I love this note page that I made because each section of your notes looks like the sec looks like the zone that we're talking about. Um, and so there are three main zones, but we're going to talk about five today. This is what the paper should look like as I'm going through these notes. Keep in mind that each of those bars is in your notes because that's what that zone of the ocean looks like. So we're going to start by talking about the sunlight zone. This is the zone at the top. This is also known as the epipelagic zone. And if you're a fancy word um, linguist like me, you'll know that epi, like epipen that goes on your skin, um, epipelagic is the top zone. Epi means on top. And so this zone is really cool. If you've ever been to the ocean, this is definitely the zone you've swam in. Um, the continental shelf is in this area. This layer has the most light, the highest temperatures, the most life, it's the least dense, and the least salinity. So I'm going to talk about each of those factors in a second, and don't worry if that's really confusing. It usually takes my students a couple weeks to get that concept down of me quizzing them, so you do not have that benefit, unfortunately. But, okay, so if I'm looking at, this is my continent, remember, this is my ocean. The um, sunlight zone is like this zone right here. It's basically just the continental shelf and this top layer. So it makes sense, Let's, let me go in order. It says that this layer has the most light. That makes sense, right? If my sun is up here, which layer is gonna have the most light? The one that's getting the most direct sunlight. This is the twilight zone, or it's actually the twilight zone's much smaller than that. This is the twilight zone. So the twilight zone is still getting some of those sun rays that are making it down here, but not all of them. This is the midnight zone. By the time we get down here, there's gonna be no more sunlight. It also has the highest temperatures. Again, this makes sense. When you're out in the sunshine on a hot summer day, that's when it is the warmest, right? When the sun is out. At nighttime, the sun goes away, it's much colder. It's so true here in Colorado. So because this layer is getting the most sunlight, it makes sense that this layer would have the most heat. So, and then this kind of goes with this, it has the most life. 
what do plants need to survive class what is photosynthesis photosynthesis is when plants take in co2 and h2o and turn it in to oxygen and glucose right what do plants need to survive they need the sun and so with that in mind if there's more producers then there could be more consumers if there's more consumers then there could be more decomposers and so it just makes sense if you think about each of these logically you don't have to memorize each individual fact but this area is going to have the most light the most temperature the most um, living organisms we also call that biodiversity remember bio means life and diversity means different so there's the most different living things in this zone um, it's the least dense it has the least salinity so these two kind of go together remember we drew our pyramid um, yesterday I think and we showed how what's on top is going to have the least pressure right if we're in the top of a human pyramid we want to be there because they have nothing pushing down on them that's like the sunlight zone it doesn't have any of the other layers of the ocean pushing down on it so it has the least pressure if you think about this if you've ever been like in the deep end of the pool um down at oh, i forget what that park is called we go there all the time um the park that's downtown if you ever go swimming and you go in the deep end you'll notice as you go down deeper that your ears start to pop that's because the pressure is increasing the more you go down right the further you go down into the water the more water is on top of you and the more water is pushing against your eardrum so that is the sunlight zone the next zone we're going to talk about is the twilight zone and this is kind of a cool example of an organism that lives in the twilight zone so you'll see that there's some sunlight here but not a lot this is where animals start to get crazy so this is in the middle of the ocean layers it's known as the mesopelagic zone now if you think about that like um i'm trying to think of a good word like mesopotamia means between two rivers um mesothelioma Meso, if you think of other like mezzanine, there we go. That's like in the middle of a building or um, the middle of an area. I'm trying to think of other words that have meso. I'm totally like blanking on them now, but just take it for me. Meso means middle, meso, middle, meso, middle. So the twilight zone is in the middle. So it's actually gonna have the middle amount of everything. So if you just remember that twilight is the middle, then your life becomes so much easier. It has less light, slightly less dense, slightly colder, and slightly saltier. Um, and it makes sense that salt would increase as we go down. If you've ever taken some salt water in wa salt and mixed it in water, and you mix it there, and you let it sit for a really long time, you'll notice that some of the salt starts to collect at the bottom. You'll start to see some salt at the bottom of that glass. This is exactly what's happening in the ocean. Ocean is salty. And that salt over time slowly collects at the bottom and it sinks and it's pushing down on top of each other. And so that's why we have saltier and saltier zones as we go down. It's slightly colder because it's getting less sunlight and it's slightly saltier. The midnight zone is the zone of the ocean where there is no light. It's actually the biggest, too. If you look on your interactive notebook, if you look on here, this is a huge zone of the ocean. And it's amazing. The deeper we go, the less we know. And so we don't know a ton about the midnight zone, but we're learning more every day. It continues to decrease in sea life temperature and increase in pressure for all the reasons that we just talked about. Finally, we have the abyssal zone. Now, this isn't really what the abyssal zone looks like because they're shining a light on it. The abyssal zone also has no sunlight. This is the deepest, darkest, coldest part of the ocean. This is basically just that part on the ocean floor. Um, think about it, it's very different if animals have like a floor to live on than just the general space of the midnight zone. It's also known as the hadopelagic zone. The deeper we go, the less we know. We actually know less about the ocean um, the deepest parts of the ocean than we do about the moon. We have a better picture of the moon than we have of the ocean that is on our own earth. That's how difficult it is to study. The next thing I want you to do is this interactive notebook. Um, you have all of the words on the right. Remember the scissors page means we rip it out, we cut out those and we paste them on the other side. Um, I'm going to let you do that. Make sure you do that before you continue this video because I'm gonna show you the answers. So if you're here, um, I'm showing you the answers. The sunlight zone is the one on the top. It has the most life. It's also known as epipelagic. It has the least pressure and the highest temperatures. The middle one is the mesopelagic twilight zone, and the bottom one has the lowest temperatures, highest salinity, bathopelagic. It's the densest, highest pressure, and it's the midnight zone. 
Thank you so much for all of your hard work, everybody. Make sure that you are asking questions if you have them, and I will see you in Language Arts.